What's up, guys? And welcome to episode five of season two of Show Me a Rig, the program for viewers by viewers, where you guys get to show off your custom systems on the channel and potentially win a hundred dollar Amazon gift card when it all is said and done. Now, for those of you guys who are new here, and I do have a feeling that it's probably quite a few of you since. We haven't done a Show Me Your Rig episode since I had a large influx of subscribers come to the channel. So I want to say, hey guys, hope you guys are enjoying the content. And let me explain how we do things here. So this is the email address right up here that you guys should take note of if you are interested in being on the show. Submit to me your name, your system specs, what you use the system for, any notes or interesting facts about the build, and of course, as many high quality photos and different angles of your computer as you possibly can. Now, while I do get a lot of submissions per month, I do go through all of them. I see every email that comes through. I can't reply to all of them because that would just be a huge task, but I do see every submission and I appreciate everybody sending in your systems. What I do is I go through the ones that have come in. I pick three of my favorites and I feature them on the program. At the end of 10 episodes, I pick the best three and you guys vote on who gets that sweet cash. This season we are shifting focus away from custom liquid cooled builds and towards AIO builds and air cooled builds. So while we will still feature some custom loops on the channel like we are going to today, they are not eligible for the end of season prize that is going to go to an air cooled system or an AIO cooled system. But without further ado, let's get to our first build today and that's from Abraham right now. Got one of these and need to know how to cool it? Check out Enermax's all new LickTech TR42 series of coolers. Featuring a full cover copper base plate, rubber vibration dampening radiator pads, and an all new block top design with addressable RGBs, the LickTech is designed specifically for the new Threadripper 2 series of CPUs and comes in both 240 and 360 millimeter flavors. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So system number one from Abraham R. Abraham writes, Hello BPS Customs, I am Abraham and I live in Japan and love everything about computers. I always watch your uploads and other pro guys like you. Well, I don't know about eh, pro. Eh. Thank you, anyway. Uh, so now I decided to try to send you my rig. This is just a mid-range or budget build because I used my existing GPU and from there I want my parts to be organized. I think he kind of means matched. Uh, and I also added a white theme, small form factor, and RGB, and forgot to say this is my first custom water cooling build. My real plan is hard tubing, but unfortunately bending is really difficult, so I decided to go soft tubing for now. All right, all right, Abraham, what you got? So this is a Corsair Crystal 280X, a uh, chassis that I actually really like and I've done a monthly build in. Uh, it's got a Gigabyte Aorus B450M motherboard, a Ryzen 5 2600 at 4 gigahertz, uh, a 2x8 gig kit of G-Skill Trident Z RGB 3200, uh, GTX 1060 6 gig, a Samsung 960 EVO 500 gig uh, SSD, and some Thermaltake Pure Plus 120 fans. So this, I guess, is a picture of, I guess, kind of his setup with another PC over here. Uh, but this is what we are worried about, and obviously this is what draws your eye. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I actually really like this case, and it kind of along the same design aesthetic as the Lian Lee PCO 11 with the front glass uh, kind of letting you see things from uh, from different angles uh, but this is the inside of his case uh, now soft tubing builds I I think the general consensus is that hard tubing builds obviously are going to look better they're gonna look cleaner they're gonna look more professional but soft tube there's something about a really well done soft tubing system that just really really appeals to me now maybe it's the way he's run the tubes maybe it's the the fact that the tubing is a little bit colored it looks like i guess there's some blue to it uh or i mean unless that's just kind of a my eyes playing tricks on me because of the color of the lighting um but just in general i really like the way this loop came together now he only sent us in that th those are the only photos that we have so uh, one, two, three, four, that's it. Oh, five, 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 sorry. Um, but not a whole lot of detail that we can go over here. 
But then again, there's nothing that stands out to me as being uh, inherently in need of change. I was a little concerned that the pump was sitting on the GPU, and I think from this angle, that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, but then as I was scrolling through the photos, uh, it's not. It's the, the bracket is up here, and it's actually just mounted to the rear wall of the case. So that's good. I was gonna just gonna slap you on the wrist or something for that. Uh, but no, that's fine. The way he's got it here is fine. Building a custom loop in a small form factor chassis uh, like like this is always a challenge. And it looks like you you did a, you just kind of nailed it. The parts choices, uh, you know, I understand that you you did give somewhat of an explanation for that. I would almost never recommend uh, doing a custom loop with a twenty six hundred or sixteen hundred twenty what a Ryzen five chip and a GTX ten sixty. It really doesn't make any sense. Your water cooling components alone cost more than those two items did most likely so that doesn't it doesn't really add up there's no real reason to do it um you could get that you could get that four gigahertz overclock using an aio or even some air coolers on that chip and the 1060 is not a hot running card at all so it's a little silly to do this however i understand you're working with what you got um and what you did with it looks great and i really commend you for putting this system together uh, in this this configuration, I think it looks really good. So Abraham, you get a thumbs up for me, um, even though your parts choices are a little suspect. Uh, but this system looks awesome, and I really appreciate you sending it in. And uh, let's let's move on to the next one. System number two today is from Elliot M. He keeps it short and sweet and writes, "Hi." I'm a 17 year old who's been interested in building PCs for a while now, although I just recently got around to actually doing so after saving for a couple of years. My new rig has, uh, he's got an NZXT H500i case. Uh, that's an excellent case. I never reviewed the i version of it, uh, but the H500 is really good, especially for the price. Uh, an i7-8700K at five gigahertz, an NZXT Kraken X62, a four by eight gigabyte, kit of G-Scale Trident C RGB DDR4-3000, uh, Asus RTX 2080 Dual, an NZXT N7 motherboard, and a Samsung 500 gig 970 EVO. All right, Elliot, let's take a look at what you got going on here. And right away, we can see that you are all in on the NZXT ecosystem. You got the H500i case, You've got the Kraken X62, you've got the N7 motherboard, you've got the air fans. So this, uh, the the I, the intelligent controller that comes with this case is probably working overtime, keeping everything in check. Uh, I do see that you have a, an LED strip over here of some kind that is just off. Uh, I mean, the system is running, so I don't see, yeah, right here. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, it's plugged in. There's a plug coming over here, uh, but I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong here. Uh, it looks like it's a hue strip, actually. It says NZXT on it, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, but you got the white and black and aqua, I guess, color scheme going on here. And picture your cable management looks great. Um, you really have so these. You, you've used these uh, the pre-configured cable channels just a little bit, but as far as running the the um, your 24 pin and your uh, your PCIe power and all that those are kind of those are kind of going in other places and that's certainly fine. Uh, I actually found these channels to be uh, kind of in the way, like not quite wide enough to do with what I needed, and uh, they they stick out a little bit and they kind of got in the way. So I you can unscrew them and just remove them and that's kind of what I did. But you clearly don't need to do that because your cable management looks great. Uh, so here's a picture of your system off. Uh, and I actually really just like the black and white. I think this is a really striking um, disparity between like the white highlights and the and the black parts of the case and the fans and the, the GPU. Um, the the N7 motherboard did not get great reviews from a lot of people. I actually never ended up getting one of them to take a look at, but um, it was pretty overpriced for what it gave you. Uh, however, it still performed fine. 
uh, and it obviously gives you a really striking visual appearance, uh, which is what you have going on here. Um, I see you have your PCIe cables going in different directions. Uh, one's going down under the cable management bar. I don't know if I have another picture of that. Yeah, one's going, so one goes, to, hey, that's me. Is that me? What, what am I doing in there? Are you watching me? While you must, <laughs> you must be watching me uh, while taking a photo of this, and the reflection is—that's weird, but flattering in a, in some way. Uh, but anyway, your PCIe cables, one goes back this way, in, uh, and then one goes down here. Uh, why is there? I wonder if there's a reason why they you didn't route them both in the same direction. Either way, uh, I think in this case, I prefer them going here. Uh, like down here, uh, because there should be enough room. But um, either way, if you sent them back this way, I think just it would it would make for instead of them like like branching out from each other, it would just keep it one continuous flow. And I think that might just look a tad bit better. Um, not to say that your cable management is at all bad. This is unfortunately something you just can't hide. In this case, it just goes right across that that white. I, I guess it's like a, it's a thermal guard or something. Um, I don't know what the purpose of this this armor here is. But anyway, because it's a black cable that goes uh, right across, it, it's imminently visible. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. But, I mean, it looks like you did the rest of your cabling really well. Uh, you have this stuff kind of routed up here and tucked in. Uh, the cabling down here is just hidden away and impossible to see. Uh, and everything else really looks good. I like the uh, the white AAO sleeving. I think that goes really well in this system, especially. And um, not a whole lot to critique here, except that LED strip and maybe send these down through the same channel, the PCIe cables. Uh, other than that, man, great system. Uh, and you have an I you have an 8700K and a 20 an RTX 2080. Uh, this thing will keep you gaming for many years to come uh so thank you very much for sending in your system and i guess it's time for the last one so last up is larry o who writes good day bps customs i built this gaming and home office rig about a year ago here are the specs it's got a cooler master he writes he writes master case 500p i think it looks like a Master Case 5. I, I think he meant a Master Case 5. Uh, you got a Core i7-8700 non-K, uh, Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming motherboard, a 2x8 gig kit of Corsair Vengeance uh, LED DDR4-2666. It's the red kit. Uh, Zotac GTX 1080 Mini, uh, Western Digital SSD, a Samsung SSD, and a Crucial SSD. A uh, Seasonic 750 Focus Plus Gold power supply and a Cryorig H5 Ultimate CPU cooler. Uh, he also writes some notes on this build. At the time, I was not interested in overclocking and there was a good deal on the CPU and motherboard as a bundle from a local retailer. Uh, I may be looking to upgrade to the 8700K in the near future for a bit of OC. I held off buying RAM till late last year and I got and I still regret it because prices soared, so I ended up buying a 2666 kit. I'm now looking to buy a 3600 speed kit, which is now at about the same price as when I bought my current RAM. Should I go for it? Uh, I guess we'll answer that in a second. And uh, third thing is, I love the black and red theme, but I went with blue LED fans up front to break the monotony. The droid is there to cover the cables attached to the PSU. All right. Well, let's take a look at what you got going on. Um, now, just to address your memory question, um, so Intel is not nearly as memory speed dependent as AMD is because AMD uses the speed of the memory to help the CCXs communicate across, this, across the Infinity fabric. Um, so the faster memory you have, the less latency there is there, and honestly you speed your system up significantly um, Intel is not that way uh, so there you're not going to notice as much of a difference and still I probably wouldn't go for 3600 speed memory in any case if you really need to or want to 
3200 is fine um but with intel it's not as much of a concern if you had an amd system i would say it's worth it intel uh, probably not so much um all right so you got a black and red theme which you said you love you got some star wars figurines in here you got captain phasma you've got who does that say first order stormtrooper okay and you've got a little i never remember the name of this droid it's it's evil bb8 down there i never remember the name of that droid uh but you got some nice cabling going on here uh and let's take a before we take a look at some more pictures let's see if we can see anything that we maybe don't like about the interior i wonder why so so i have actually done this on some cooler master builds is take advantage of this second like vertical port over here to give the 24 pin cabling more exposure by running it all the way across um so i don't know how much i could fault you for doing that when i when i've done it though it's usually because the motherboard that i'm using is is an eatx board and it extends uh and covers most of these grommets so i don't have a whole lot of choice uh here, I, I'm curious as to why you went all the way this way as opposed to going through one of these cable routing grommets. I mean, it's a personal decision, but I'm just, I'd, I'd wonder why you did that. Uh, but it looks fine, and these cables are really nice. I would uh, see if I could get rid of this little tag right here. Um, that stands out pretty badly. Uh, but you said you have this droid down here to help uh, hide some cabling. Which is pretty innovative, and uh, it doesn't—it doesn't look like that's why it's there. So that's pretty neat. But I think these cases have like a tinted portion of the side glass, so that this is really not that visible at all anyway. Uh, but still, this is a cool little figurine, and it fits perfectly in that space. And go for it, man! Star Wars is awesome. Uh, so you say you talked about the uh, the black and red theme with the blue fans because you you said you did it on purpose. You wanted to break up the black and red with something a little bit different and um i don't i don't generally approve <laughs> of like mixing uh highly contrasting colors like this but i can't say i've never done it i had a, a system that was pink and blue uh and i also had a system that was blue and purple and i had the fans of different colors going at different times so whatever floats your boat man if the, if you like this and you did this on on purpose and I mean, clearly it looks good. So, awesome, man. I mean, everything obviously over here is red. Um, so you're keeping continuity in this spot and just kind of breaking it up over here. It looks like the blue kind of reflects off of Captain Phasma a little bit. I'm not sure what you're showing me. Or maybe like the um, the cable management down here. This all looks good too. Um, but yeah, so this this is a really cool picture. I so you're looking at all red, but you see the blue reflecting... It's like it's like your life is now ray traced and you see the ray traced reflection i'll just move on um but yeah this is a really cool photo i like the blue highlights hitting hitting phasma out of nowhere um from the blue front so i you know this isn't something that i would have thought to do but this looks really good and um i uh, i commend you for giving it a try uh this cryo rig cooler is gonna beast all over that 8700 so, you know, without, especially if you, you know, don't have any overclocking um, potential uh, because you have a locked chip, then this is more than enough cooling. Um, and, I, you know, even if you step up to the 8700K, uh, you should be able to use this pretty effectively. The 8700K runs pretty hot. So just be aware of your temperatures and voltages and whatnot if you end up doing that. Uh, but still, you should be able to use it at least to start out. Again, really good, really, really well put together system. Um, I don't think you sent me any other photos that we didn't see yet. Uh, but the, uh, the mesh front, uh, yeah, so this is definitely a Master Case 5. The, they made a Master Case 5 and a Pro 5. Uh, they didn't make a Master Case 500. So, um, the, one of the, the, the 5, not the Pro, had this mesh front. So, that's what you got. And I'm sure you got pretty good ventilation going on here too. Um, again, Another great system, really well built, really well specced out. Um, you know, I understand that you know the you might step up to an unlocked chip with a motherboard that supports it. You know, but there's a reason that you bought it because it was a package deal or whatever. So I get it. You know, I mean, I'm sure it still does what it needs, 
what you need it to do. And uh, with GTX 1080, I mean, you're not hurting for performance at all. So that's it. We're all done. Is that it? I think we're done. Another great system. Thank you very much for sending it in. And let's wrap up. That's it for episode five, guys. We had three awesome systems from Abraham, Elliot, and Larry. Thank you so much for participating in the show. And again, if you guys think that you have what it takes to be featured here, this is the email address to use. Name, specs, photos, anything else that might be relevant that I might want to talk about on the show, send it into that email address and I'll see what I can do for you. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Consider becoming a member or joining a Patreon community or maybe buying some merchandise. All the links are down below in the video description. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.